There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Mark Forge webinar. I'm Brian Semple. And I'm, oh, I'm Kat Pomorski. <laughs> we're going to walk you through over about the next 15 or so minutes. We're actually going to do the web the uh, demonstration that we did at IMTS. So for those of you that attended our booth at IMTS, this may or may not be a repeat, depending upon who you had the demonstration with. And for those of you that are, are net new and didn't stop by our booth, welcome. We'll hope to give you that booth experience over the next 15 or so minutes. The question line is open, so you can fire away with questions as we go. And with that, did I cover everything? I think I did, right? Yeah, I think we're good to How's go. How's the audio? Can everybody hear us? Mark, are we good on the audio? We're good on the audio. All right, so for a lot of people that came by uh, the booth, their idea of 3D printing and manufacturing was basically this. These are the types of materials that we're getting produced, right? Nylon, sort of interesting for things like uh, prototyping, but not necessarily great for anything used in the uh, factory floor on the industrial production line. Mark Forge came along and we figured out a way to do two things. One is we figured out how to go add crushed or chopped carbon fiber into what was the nylon base. So we took this and we added chopped carbon fiber to it, which made it stiff. But more importantly is we figured out a way to, to actually make a true composite by laying down a continuous uh, fiber. And therefore, we were able to create a material that is actually this strong. You cannot break this, can you? I couldn't. No one could break this at the booth. We think that's correct. I don't think anybody could. So because of that, there was a huge amount of strength now you're able to go get from 3D printed parts, such as being used by the printer behind us. So this opened up an entirely new set of applications. First set of applications was? Soft jaws. Take it away. All right, so, ooh. <laughs> All right, so one of, uh, our, one of our key applications that we really work a lot with is our soft jaws. Um, I mean, who wants to machine soft jaws for the parts then, that they then have to go and machine again? So a uh, really great application. I know one that a lot of people love here are uh, soft jaws. Uh, with our fiber, we can increase the strength of that, so you don't have to worry about those breaking, and, and you can use them multiple times. We can open it up. There we go. Oops. All right, so soft jaws, <laughs> application number one. Now, as you stated, you're, we're able to go reinforce uh, the chopped carbon fiber in the nylon with actual continuous carbon fiber threads. So one of the questions that we got a lot at the trade show was, what do these things look like? So how would you explain what actually the threads look like? The threads, the continuous fibers? Yes. So you can see here the... The yellow is the Kev one of our Kevlar. Uh, so Kevlar is one of the fibers that we can print with. And uh, this is a continuous strand of carbon or er, Kevlar, which really gives it the strength. So like this base material is our onyx, which has the chopped carbon fiber. And then the continuous strands make it really hard to break. And that's Kevlar. So we can do continuous carbon fibers with Kevlar. What else? So this is high strength, high temperature fiberglass. Yep. Uh, we have regular fiberglass yep. and then carbon fiber. Standard carbon fiber. So one of the questions we got was one of the different mark materials Mark Forge can print. So those, that's the spectrum of the composites and the nylon. And we'll talk about metal a little bit later. All right. So we took, we got soft jaws, continuous carbon fiber. What's some other applications that we have? Um, another great one is some end effectors. So these end effectors made with our onyx material and the carbon fiber uh, are much lighter than those made in like aluminum. So you can uh, decrease the time it takes you to move parts. So in the past, you used to have to go mach what, machine these uh, end effectors out of aluminum, uh, potentially send them out to your machine shop. You may bring them in, you put them on the robot, you find it doesn't fit, you have to do it again. In this case, you can go right from a CAD file. You actually can take a negative of the part you're trying to go do, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, to get the negative part you're trying to go do, create the end effector, snap it on there, boom, you're off and running. Yep. Very cool. All right. Now, the other one, this is one of my other favorite applications. Is this, is, this is what? This is punch and die, right? Yeah. And how, tell me how this thing works. So, basically, we have this uh, piece of metal that we laser cut some lines in, and then we place it into our punch and die, and then press it. That's it. Yeah. Now, this was for uh, one of our customers, what was it, Centerline Engineering? Yep. And, and this is how they did the part on it. So, again, continuous carbon fiber reinforced on the punch and die. So that's the sort of the, the toy and fixtures area that we did a lot with. Now, customers do use this for uh, actual final use parts too, right? Yeah. And so we got some examples of that. Yeah, so we got an air intake valve. Yeah. So this is kind of an air intake valve off an engine. So what we find is that continuous carbon fiber applications have been good for areas such as uh, impossible part geometries or combining multiple parts together 
that used to be multiple assemblies into a single assembly, or just where you want to use where strength and, and uh, lightweight are extremely critical. You can print the stuff out of continuous carbon fiber. You get the strength of a metal part without the hassle and the ease of being able to 3D print. Yep. Makes sense? All right, so why don't we walk people over now and actually show them how the printer works. Absolutely. We're going to mark our cameraman to follow us here. All right, so what's this? This is an X7, right? Yeah, so this is an X7. Our, it's our industrial series printer. Uh, so it has about two and a half times the build volume of the regular uh, Mark II desktop series. So we're, and you might be wondering, how can we print with continuous fibers? How can we print with continuous carbon fibers? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so we have two different nozzles. The one is printing the regular onyx material. And the onyx material is the nylon that's filled with chopped carbon fiber. Yeah. So that in and of itself is strong. Yep. And then we reinforce that with the... With the uh, continuous fiber, which is in the smaller tube. Yep. And you can lay that down. Uh, so right now we're printing some soft jaws. <laughs> oh, awesome. And, and I assume that's the continuous carbon fiber wheel there in the back? Yeah. And then the, uh, the onyx material is somewhere inside the cabinet. Yep. It's in a dry box in the cabinet. Now this printer starts around $70,000. You can get a smaller footprint size of a similar printer down to around $13,000. It really depends on uh, what you're trying to go do. For those of you that are out considering uh, competitive platforms, say from companies like uh, Stratasys, benchmark this thing against anything Stratasys is gonna be showing you in the same price point. And you'll see for 70K, you get an awesome printer that not only does chopped carbon fiber, but also can lay down continuous carbon fiber to give you the strength of a true composite. Yeah, not just carbon fiber, all not the fibers. Not just carbon fiber. So you can lay down continuous carbon fiber, Kevlar, high strength, high temperature fiberglass and standard fiberglass. Yeah. Did I get those right? You're right. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so it, it's logical now that since we were so successful with the FDM printing of, of uh, carbon fiber, that the next thing people start to ask us is, hey, can you apply that same type of techniques that you're doing at FDM for the strength? Can you apply that and actually start to go print metal? So if you were at the show, you actually saw that we, were, we had at the show, one of our Metal X printers was printing metal in somewhat of a similar fashion to this. Unfortunately, I don't have one here because they are in such backlog, almost every unit we have is either at a trade show or is being shipped to customers. Um, but printing metal uh, has opened up a, a, a different set of applications for us, right? Yeah. So one of those applications would be, here's one over here. Uh, so this is an example of say a, this is an impeller blade printed with 17.4 stainless. Um, this is a good example of an MRO part, right? Where let's say you've got a remote location where you need to print some spare parts for a device. You could send the, the uh, CAD, the files to that, that location, and then it could get printed on a metal printer. Um, walk us through how the metal printing process works. So it's very, very similar to our regular printing process. You have your two different nozzles. One will print the metal powder bound in a wax and a plastic. Yep. And the other one will print our release material, which allows you to take the part, the supports off the part easier. Okay. And then you just lay it down like you would a regular FDM uh, style printer. Yep. And then you have to follow it up with two post-processing steps. One, you put it in the wash to remove half of the binder. And then you put it into our sintering oven to remove the other half of the binder. Now, I'm assuming when you put it in the center, the part shrinks, right? Yeah, so it shrinks, shrinks about 20%. So then how do we know, how do you know how to big to print the part if it's going to shrink on you? Well, the good news is our Iger software does all of those calculations for you. Now, Iger is, is cloud-based, right? Yeah. So we've got a big whopping compute farm somewhere that sits there and does all the calculations, right, to make sure that the part you get in it actually ends up being the part size that you need. Yeah, exactly. And it's highly predictable in terms of the ability to amount of shrink, right? Because we know the calculations on that. All right, so cool. So end user part, so three steps. Gets printed, then it goes to the wash, then it gets centered. So this is an end user part. What, other, what have some of the other applications been for metal? So another really great application is uh, combining parts into more complicated geometries like this one. So this was originally uh, uh, built in four different parts. And with our, our 3D printing, the, we were able to make that one part. Oh, very cool. Okay. And then one of the applications that I get excited about is now this is one, this is, it would be the ability to actually go and 3D print injection molds, right? So you can imagine how much it costs you to go do an injection mold. So this was 3D printed uh, and done some uh, light wet sanding to get the, the finish that was required. Now this is done with tool steel and we're currently not shipping tool steel, but it's the next uh, metal up in the pipeline. Right now we're doing 17.4 stainless followed by tool steel sometime early part of next year. 
So metal is super exciting for us. We think there's a lot of parts on that, but there's still a ton of parts that can be done with carbon fiber. Do we cover it all? I think so. All right, let's take a quick look at the questions. So we've got a couple questions coming in. So next question is, uh, this is around resolution and accuracy. Fire away. You know the answer to this one, right? It's like <laughs> yeah. microns or it depends if you're a micron or a thousands person. What's the answer on that yeah, one? Yeah, so if you're looking at our metal printer, it can currently print right now a plus or minus five thou per inch. And um, our uh, composite printers yep. are similar. It's just a uh, five thou. Okay. Super. Uh, so next question is on availability. Uh, are all these printers available? And the answer is yes, available and shipping today. That was it. That's easy. That's only two questions, three questions. So if there's none other questions, then I think we'll wrap this up. So next steps, Marco, are you can do nothing, but we don't think you should do anything because additive manufacturing is changing the world of uh, industrial manufacturing. Uh oh, now we got some more questions. Uh, where are they made? They are made in Massachusetts. So everything here is made in USA, made in Massachusetts. Turnaround time on metal parts. You want to answer that one? Yeah. So it really depends on what, how big your part is. So uh, I would say this guy probably prints in like four hours or so. And then the wash would probably be a day. And then our center cycle is about 25, 26 hours. And so it, it, it introduces interesting part dynamics, right? Because if you look at... Um, uh, how 3D printing is starting to go impact manufacturing. There's going to be some amount of low volume end use parts that can go do. What we're committed to doing is we're going down both the cost and the time curve as fast as we can to gradually start to go gobble up more and more of the end use parts. Uh, we have experts here that can help you figure out exactly which parts, either work hold parts and uh, um, Work hold parts, other tooling fixtures, and potential end use parts make sense from both an economic and a time standpoint to go do this. Uh, we, we've been getting a ton of experience on helping you match that. And one of the action items you can go do, it'd be to contact us for a consultation. We can try to help you figure out which parts makes the most sense. Uh, other questions, colors available on plastic parts. Um, so that's the nylon. Right now we have several colors. We have white and we have black. <laughs> so we have white and black. And I think for lots of times when people are asking on the colors, they're trying to go do what? Design and prototyping, right? Um, we certainly have some customers doing design and prototyping. Where we're really going to win, correct me if I'm wrong on this, is that people want to do functional prototypes, right? Yeah. Where you want, where the color isn't as important as can I go create a functional prototype part that's actually useful in the actual machine itself? And that's where we've, that's where we've been strong on that one. Uh, well, there's a lot of questions here. We, you must have done something to get the questions in here. What are the tolerances on the finish without going to a finish machine? So why don't we answer that for, well, for, for carbon fiber, it looks like that. For metal, that one's unfinished, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is just the finish you would get. So how would, uh, people probably can't see that. So, yeah. so this is super smooth, right? And shiny. How would you describe this? Subjectively, not engineering wise. <laughs> um, it's still shiny. You can definitely see the layer lines because it is 3D printed. Doesn't focus in that well. How's that? How's that? Maybe that's better. All right. Uh, super. What else do we have on here? Do you see the cost of filaments going up in the future or coming down? I would say, I don't know. I assume they'd be going down as volume goes up. Not sure. That's a good question. Uh, can you provide any info about coming a reseller to become a reseller? Uh, how do you become a reseller? Anyone in the audience know? Any, we have a listening audience here. Is there an email address? Email Marco, M-A-R-K-O at markforge.com. Required maintenance and life of units, both types. You know that one? So the maintenance is relatively easy. There are some consumable items. It, it usually is just the, uh, the print nozzles and sweeping the machine out. Yeah, there's a, definitely not too maintenance. It really depends on what you, unit you're thinking about, but uh, you change those out every like month or so. The nozzles or the? Uh, the nozzles. But that's gonna be based on the amount of? of, of yeah, but it's all based on the amount that you print, what you print. Good question. We probably should get some more specifics in terms of based on the amount of uh, filament you use, based on what we think the red nozzle plays. Good question, not sure the answer to that one. How long until the next materials come out? 
we're always putting out new types of materials. I think the next one, the next big one for us is going to be the tool steel. Yeah, the H13 tool steel. H13 tool steel, which will be in the first part of uh, next year. How does chop carbon fiber appear after finished machining a printed part? You wouldn't finish machine a chopped carbon fiber part. You can. You can? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But uh, none of this has been finished. No, yet. none of this has been uh, finished up at all. It prints at a, a hundred micron or fifty micron, depending on what unit you have. Yeah, I think I think if if uh, for the folks asking questions on the finish, if there's there's a couple things you can do. So one would be you can go across the sample part from us, and then depending upon where you are in the cycle, if if uh, you want to actually get us to print a part for you, contact Marco M A R K O at markforge.com, and we can figure out how to get you into that process. All right, what else we got on here? Um, Marco, can you do a quick scroll up? Can I buy your printers online? Uh, yes, you can. You can buy the, uh, some of the printers online. Fiber filaments keep going up. I think that could be all the questions. All right, so next steps. Uh, Marco, M-A-R-K-O at markforge.com. There's a couple of things you can do. So one is you can go and request a demo and we can do another custom demo discussion with you and a larger part of your team. You can request a sample part. Or if you're far down and you're actually ready to make a printer purchase, um, email Marco and we can get you set up with actually a demonstration part of uh, a specific part you want to print. Some people just buy without a demonstration part, but if you want to take a look at some of the finishes and other things, we can figure out a way to make that happen. That's right. And Marco, also- Come on and say hi to everybody. All right, sure. Here I am. Okay. <laughs> hi, guys. Um, so if you are looking for specific information about material or printer specifications, we have a wealth of data sheets on the website at markforge.com. Uh, those might be helpful if you're asking about tolerances or other um, numbers that you're interested in. Those I highly recommend. Awesome. Thank you all very much. I'm Brian Semple. I'm Kat Pomorski. Have a great day. See ya.